What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another Arsenal therapy, and we will need it today, people. Halloween was a couple days ago, but today is going to be scary hours, especially for the Arteta fanboys, that is for sure, people. But big up to everyone locked in later than usual, but uh, we're here. We couldn't miss that one after, um, you know, what we watched yesterday. But listen, according to 50% of the fan base, you know, they're happy we're out. Um, we're going for bigger and better things, you know, maybe the Champions League, maybe the Premier League people, uh, maybe the Community Shield, I don't know, maybe the Florida Cup, but uh, yeah, a lot of the fan base are happy throwing competitions in the bin. I don't understand it. Um, what happened to being a big club and an ambitious club? Uh, I don't know. But anyway, big up to everyone locked in. Thank you to everyone who tuned in for the watch along yesterday. And um, we got a lot to talk about. Player ratings today, they're not for the faint-hearted. I can't like it's 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 gonna it's gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly um, because you know there there are some players that were on the pitch yesterday that should not play for this football club. It's as simple as that. There are players on the pitch that should not play for the football club. But we're going to talk about it. Um, we've got lots to talk about. Player ratings, press conference reaction. I've got some facts. I've got some facts. We, we're turning up with paperwork and notes, people. Not no iPad, not no nothing, straight pen and paper settings. I've got facts there. Yeah, because when you say opinions, some people can't cope. But facts, there's no hiding place from them. Um, but big up to everyone locked in. Hope you're well. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, yesterday, Arsenal go to West Ham, London Stadium, League Cup, and we just dash it. We got the League Cup and we just dashed it like a frisbee across East London and just said, do whatever you want to us. There was a song back in the day from um, T.I. He said, you could have whatever you like. Yeah, they had whatever they wanted yesterday, West Ham. They could do anything. They had Fabianski in goal. He left Arsenal 10 years ago. He's approaching 40 years of age. He had one shot to save yesterday. Lucas Fabianski. Mavropanos, the Greek giant, who was deemed not good enough, looked like an absolute tank yesterday as he put Eddie and Ketia in his back pocket. Remember Eddie? Your defence is in trouble when Nketiah's in the... Listen, your defence is in no trouble. When Nketi is in the room, unless you're a championship club, which let's be honest, Sheffield United are a championship club. If you're a championship club, you're in big trouble. It'll look like R9 against you. But if you're not, you're probably pretty safe. Let's be totally honest. Um, yeah, Stacks on deck. You know, big boy tune. Listen, you're in no trouble when Nketi is in the room. Let me tell you that. That brother there, the hype of the hat trick over the weekend. Don't worry about him, mate. He's going nowhere. He's going absolutely nowhere. He shouldn't be at Arsenal. Um, but I'm not going to individualise him. There are a number of others. We're going to talk about Neil from the Inbetweeners, a.k.a. Kai Havertz, Dry Havertz, Shy Havertz. Potentially the worst signing in recent history for Arsenal Football Club. They say it's what he does off the ball. Any chance of him doing something on the ball? Jorginho, glorified pensioner from Chelsea. Um... Absolute disgrace of a signing. Fabio Vieira, I'm no longer... The Vieira's got to go again. I've got to go back to calling him Fabio. That's the most he can get. Absolutely horrendous signing. And uh, we're going to talk about that and a few others as well. Uh, I thought I'd start off with this bombshell. Let's go with this one. Eddie and Ketio. 18 games in a row without a goal away from home. Edward. 18 games. 18 games in a row away from home, this guy hasn't scored. And people say your defence is in trouble when Eddie's in the room. Your defence ain't in no trouble. 18 games in a row, not one. We play 38 games in a season. That's one game. If he doesn't score against Newcastle this weekend, he hasn't scored for half a season outside of the Emirates. And I'm supposed to believe this guy it can potentially lead us to a Premier League. Edward Cheddar Cheese and Ketty. 18 games in a row away from home. He's meant to lead us to a striker, uh, to a title. As I said yesterday, Jesus is so injury prone 
that Enketia is the number one striker at Arsenal. Well, that's the harsh reality of the situation. He will probably start more Premier League games than Gabriel Jesus this season. But I'm meant to believe that foam me celebration that he does is going to lead us to a title. It's Norbit, it's Axel Foley, it's Eddie Murphy, the king of Zamunda, coming to America, settings people. It's a comedy act. It is shambolic. Put some respect on his name, people saying not a chance. I can't put respect on that name. I'm sorry, people. It's got a, it's got to end. It's got to end. Um, but you know, it's what he does in training, people. If you can't see what he does off the ball, you don't know football. That's what they tell me. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, Eddie, Ed, let's see where he leads us to, people. Um, anyway, if you're not over 18, I, I suggest you step away from this stream. It's going to be a bloodbath. Right? It's going to be a bloodbath in these player ratings. Um, this will not be for the faint-hearted. If you are purely an Arteta fan over Arsenal, step out. Leave the room. Go and play EAFC. Go and watch Coronation Street from last night. Maybe watch Man United lose 3-0 to Newcastle. I'll tell you one thing. Mikel Arteta should thank Eric Ten Hag today. He should send him a text message and say, Eric, thank you for what you did last night. And Eric's going to go, what are you talking about? Because Man United, whatever we do, Man United are like, hold my beer. We're going to get even worse. They lost 3-0 at home to a B team. It's crazy. But take nothing away from what we did. Last night was an absolute disgrace. It was a disgrace. This football club, this fan base, not everyone, plenty of you are on the right track, but a lot of this fan base need to wake up and smell the coffee. And I don't even drink coffee, but smell the coffee, people. Because we're walking around here Big Arsenal, big boy Arsenal with the big stadium and the big history and the Invincibles and the massive fan base and Thierry Henry and Dennis Burkamp and Tony Adams and Vieira, all that great heritage. We're walking around going, nah, I don't care about the League Cup. I'm not in, nah, this is what people are saying. I don't want the League Cup. This is what people are saying to me. I'm not bothered. Why aren't you bothered? How many trophies have you seen Arsenal win in the last decade? A few FA Cups? Fair play, we won them. When's the last time we won a League Cup? 30 years, nearly 31 years. Three decades. Some of you, depending on your age, you've never seen Arsenal win a League Cup. Never. You've seen Obafemi Martin score a last-minute goal at Wembley with Chesney and Koscielny, you know? You've seen Didier Drogba slap one side netting. You know, against us in the final. 31 years, but we nah, we don't want it. We don't want it. We're, we're concentrating on bigger things. What are those bigger things is the questions that I keep asking. If you don't want the League Cup, what is your focus on? And Champions League, okay, we've never won it, ever, in our history. With Thierry, with Dennis, with Wrighty, we never won it. So do you think we're going to win it with Eddie and Mohamed El Nenny? and Kivior and Haver, you think we're going to win it with those guys? Because if we can't beat West Ham, you think we go to Napoli? You think we go to Real Madrid? You think we go to Bayern Munich and Man City and beat them? Okay, Premier League, we were close last year. You think we win the Premier League? We're worse than we was last season and we spent £210 million. Pounds. We're worse. We're worse than last season. It's unbelievable. Our midfield cannot function at the moment. We are a bagel of a football club. There's nothing in the middle. Granite Xhaka, his stock has gone up so high since he left this football club. Because I'm looking at our midfield and I'm going, geez, we could do with Xhaka in there. We signed Declan Rice, marquee signing. He's been brilliant, right? We signed Yuri and Timber, marquee signing, injured. Nothing we can do about that. Unfortunate. We signed Kai Havertz, one of the worst signings I've ever seen at Arsenal at this current moment in time. I could sit here in six months and say I got it totally wrong, he's a baller, but I don't see it happening. In midfield, he is atrocious, and he, I don't think he gets into this team up front, so I don't see how it ever becomes a success. We spent £210 million and got worse, because now you're trying to fit people into the team, change the system, and we look worse. We're dysfunctional now. When we pick the team on the weekend, you don't know what the team's going to be. 
Will it be Havertz? Will it be Odegaard? Will it be Rice? Will it be Jorginho? You don't know what it's going to be. And now we're dysfunctional. You could have picked our team last year. You can't pick it now. So, listen. If you can't win the Premier League and the Champions League, which at the moment we can't. We haven't won one of them for 20 years, which was the Prem. Why are we turning our nose up at the League Cup and the FA Cup? Isn't football about winning trophies, about success? And I and Lee, you're right, you're spot on. You get about 100 grand, apparently, if you win the Carabao Cup, right? Week's wages for Eddie and Ketty. But as a fan, you will remember the trophies you won. As a player, you'll remember the trophies you won. Why did the team not take it seriously? Why did the manager not? Right, let's get into player ratings. This ain't going to be nice. I tell you that much. And some people will say, it's overreaction. It's only the League Cup. We're going to concentrate on bigger things. Like what? Like, of course, we are going for those competitions. Winning breeds success. Pep won this competition four years on the bounce. And he's the best manager in the world. The best coach. One of the best coaches we've ever seen. He won it four years on, a, on the row. In a row. Four years on the bounce. So if it's good enough for Pep, why ain't it good enough for Mikel Arteta? If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for Pep. That's what I want to see. Give me a League Cup. I'll take a League Cup. I will go to Wembley, start a march, beat Chelsea, beat Liverpool, whoever, and see Odegaard lift that competition. But no, we turn our nose up at it. Apparently, we're too stush for that. We don't want the League Cup. Let me get through your Super Chats before I get into the player ratings. It's going to be a bloodbath. It's footy, not soccer, said. As much as the team on grass was not filled with quality, we got a factor in part A and ESR starting that midfield without the injuries. They need to go. Uh, yeah, fair point. But on the flip side, um, it's footy. West Ham had no Antonio. They played without a recognised striker. They played Jared Bowen, Falks 9. Played no Ward Prowse, who's been their best midfielder. And they had a 38-year-old goalkeeper who left Arsenal 10 years ago. With all due respect, the team we had on the pitch cost more than this. So, I can't even... Thomas Partey, yep, yeah, that's a big loss. ESR never plays anyway. So, I hear you, but it's no excuse for the manager. Jay Dizzle said, big up the C unit and uh, I'm here for the therapy. Big up yourself, bro. DJ Mac Daddy, Curtis, do you have a Scooby? Uh, why El Nenny is at the club? Can't get a game in the League Cup, then where? Is he just making up the numbers? He trains well. What you got to understand, El Nenny was a teammate of Mikel Arteta when he was a player. They're friends. They are genuine friends. If he was the manager of a club, you walked in and your friend was at the club, you could give him 50 grand a week without anybody really complaining about it. Would you do it? Would I give 50 grand a week to my good friend to just train well and smile and sit on the bench? Possibly would. It ain't my money. 50 grand a week ain't going to get you a top player. Friendly vibes, my friend. El Nenny and Arteta, they played together at Arsenal. Dio, big up Big C. Imagine this was my first game watching the boys live. Some performance was sitting in the West Ham stands. At, wow. I bet you heard I'm forever blowing bubbles. I'd have asked for my money back. No matter how. I'm saying what kind of foolishness is that in the wind and rain you lot play like that? Um... Big up, Dio. Lawrence said, Big C, that Guna Khan you in your X-Men. Bro, the brother. Uh, this, Listen, you know me, people. Twitter, I drop grenades, and then you get funny replies. Oh, you're not a real fan, he said. You're not a real fan. Um, and I said, that's funny, mate, because you follow me on social media. How funny is that? That's weird, isn't it? But, you know, I don't like watching... Um, what's it called? Love Island on TV. I don't, I don't like it. When it comes on, I turn it off. I don't sit there complaining about it being on TV. You know, I just don't watch it. But yeah, he's funny, man. He's real funny. Um, Trixie said, it gets harder to state uh, our claim by the day. 100%. 100%. Trixie, if you question this manager, you are in the minority. You're in the minority. We've become a cult following at Arsenal. It happened under Arsene Wenger. It was a cult. If you thought, if you questioned Wenger, you weren't a real fan. And Wenger left. Then it was Meza Ozu. If you said Ozu wasn't good enough, you don't even understand. And now it's Arteta. 
people think if you are not a fanboy of Arteta, you're not an Arsenal fan. It's it's strange. It's strange. Why have you not got a right to question a manager after four years? 650 million. One trophy which was without the players he wanted. He won that trophy with the players he didn't want. Your Aubameyangs, your Gwendouzis, and one top four. Conte got top four in six months at Tottenham. Solskjaer came second at Manchester United. And yet, Eddie Howe walked into Newcastle in a relegation battle, got top four the following year. Yet I'm supposed to sing and dance in the street because our manager got top four in his fourth season after spending 650 million. Is that really a miracle? I don't think it is. You know, I, I expect more than that, mate. But, you know, I, I'm probably in the minority. I am. I drop these grenades and I see people in the mentions. Um, but it is what it is. AJ, how come Newcastle can rotate and win, but we can't? They made, what, nine changes and beat Man United 3-0 away from home. And their squad ain't worth half what ours is worth. Joe Willock balling out. Uh, Hype said, uh, who does Arteta think he is to throw away the cup? His arrogance, he, he thinks he's Pep. He thinks he's Pep. His arrogance is through the roof and he can't justify it. Fit said Arteta has been 8th, 8th, 5th whilst bottling 4th, 2nd whilst bottling 1st, won the FA Cup with a team that wasn't his own and has built a rubbish set of 2nd string players. He's been here 4 years. Fits, I mean, it's phase 5, it's trust the process, it's uh, back your manager. We've got Super Mick Arteta. He knows exactly what we need. Make it make sense. You're allowed to question him. You are allowed to question him. Don't make any of this social media crowd make you think you're wrong if you think, actually, should he be doing more than this? But, hey, big up fits as always. AJ, Wenger used to win these games with the youth. So, yeah, we'd have 17-year-olds making their debuts winning that. Young Gunner said the Carabao Cup final is early enough in the season to win and still have a decent league and Champions League run. Winning breeds confidence and fluidity. Arteta's rotation is shambolic. Reminds me of lockdown. Bang on. Felt like Willian and them man was at the club. And Punny said, not the Prince of Zamunda. He's the Lion Barber. <laughs> Who's talking about boxing? You don't know nothing about boxing. Yeah, that guy, man. Legend, legend. Right, let's get into it. Player ratings. Big up everyone in the comments. Keep running the comments. Yeah, the songs will come out just randomly. You know how that goes, people. Uh, trust the process. But nobody knows... Um, nobody knows where the process ends and what the process is. is. Trust the process, but what is the process? Nobody has the answer. Player ratings. 3-1 defeat. Ben White own goal. Mohamed Kudus goal. Jared Bowen goal. Mohamed Kudus, a player we apparently could have signed in the summer. But we signed a certain German attacking midfielder. 72% possession. 678 passes. They made 265 passes. It shows possession is not everything in football. It isn't. It's about what you do when you've got the ball. 14 shots on goal, only three on target. We were an absolute disgrace yesterday. A disgrace. Big up everyone in the chat. Make sure you hit the like button. Arsenal therapy settings. Uh, let's go through it. Let's have some uncomfortable conversations about some players. And I'm calm, by the way. This ain't, oh, you're overreacting. No, no overreaction. We, we've seen this performance coming. We saw hints of it against Fulham. We saw hints of it against Lons. We saw hints of it against Forest. It's been coming and we got hammered. We got hammered, people. You know, this, this was no fluke. It was no accident. Uh, right. Aaron Ramsdale. I mean, he probably might as well just write the transfer request and put it on his desk. That game yesterday did nothing to secure his future. And like I say, when we lose, not everybody's played bad. And when we win, not everybody's played good. I'm not just going to say zero, 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 zero. But listen, I might be being harsh, but I think Ramsdale should save the third one. I think Allison, I think Edison, I think those guys reaction they just tip that out somewhere you slap it just get it out the way um 
it made you look at Raya yesterday and think, actually, maybe he is our best goalkeeper. I didn't think Ramsdale was good. Um, he wasn't good. He was panicking on the ball. He gave the ball away. I, I'm not sure he'll play for Arsenal again. Some people might think that's an exaggeration, but I'm looking at it going, we're not playing in the FA Cup till January. He won't play a league game. He won't play a Champions League game. I think he could be gone in January. I really do. Um, you'll be lucky to get 30, 40 million for him. I wrote down four. Um, I think he should save it. I think he should save the third goal. I gave him a four, three or four around there. But I've wrote down four. He was nervous in possession. There seemed to be a panic in the defence. And it just didn't work. Now, Scott says Arteta's done him dirty. But this is my defence of the... A lot of people say Ramsdale's been done dirty. Raya's come in, he's been dropped. It seems harsh. He's had two years as the number one goalkeeper. If you have two years in a job to prove yourself and you don't prove yourself... That's not harsh. You've had 24 months to prove you're the best goalkeeper. He had no competition. It was his shirt by himself. And the manager says you're not quite up to it. So, yeah, his confidence has been destroyed possibly. But I think he moves on anyway. Uh, my argument would be, genuinely, is either goalkeeper good enough? Ramsdale or David Raya. I would have liked an upgrade on both of them too. But expensive, I suppose. Um... Listen, we took him from Sheffield United, who'd been relegated. Nobody said it was harsh on Leno when Leno got binned for Ramsdale. I don't think he has been treated harsh. Let's talk about Ben White. West Ham man of the match. One goal, one assist. Flick on at the near post. Reminded me of Roy Keane against Juventus, Champions League semi-final years ago. Near post run, flicks it on. Um, ben White, man. Bad positioning, sticks his head out, heads it in at the near post, then tries to head it away, heads it to the edge of the penalty area, straight to Jared Bowen, who slaps it in. Um, and I thought he was awful. I thought he was awful. Didn't help Reese Nelson. And um, it was a shocker. It was a shocker from Ben White. I'll give him a three. Three out of ten for Ben White. Um, it was awful. It was awful. We je I mean, I'm tempted to give him a two. I'm tempted to give him... He scored an own goal. and uh, I'm giving him a two. I'm sorry, I'm giving him a two. I'm downgrading it. Because without his goal, we was actually the better team until they scored. Um, I don't know what's happened. Since he's turned into the silver silver fox, he's been dreadful. So I give him, I give him a two and a half. Two and a half because I've got some lower ones coming up. Let's go to left back. Alexander Zinchenko. Um... By the way, on the Ben White discussion, I think we need to sign an attacking fullback as competition for him. Uh, that, that's my genuine opinion in the summer. Um, Alexander Zinchenko, listen. I've seen people ripping him apart with the ratings, and I get it. Uh, we're, we've got to separate his performance into two. In the first half, on the ball, he was one of our most threatening players. Right, keep it 100. Made a good run forward, got a ball from Trossard, flicked it into Eddie. Eddie puts it over the bar. He was stepping into midfield, getting on the ball. So I'm not buying into this all, people giving him zeros and ones and things like that. That's one part of it. On the ball, he was trying to make things happen. Defensively, it's an absolute disaster class at the moment. It's a disaster class. And I look at it like this. This guy's a midfielder. He's a midfielder. You can talk about he played left back for Manchester City and they won the title. Fabian Delft played left back for Manchester City and won the title. Manchester City are not a normal football team. They could probably put Foden at left back and win the title. They're that good. Zinni is not a defender. He's not a left back. Get him in 1v1s, he struggles. It's not going to happen. Defensively, he was shambolic yesterday. Shambles. Now, we signed him to play him left back. Cool. But does anyone think he should be at left back? Was Kieran Tierney really worse than him? But Tierney's made out of, you know, wet tissue. He just falls apart. I'll give him a three. 
The second goal is ball watching. He got dragged. It's not happening. And the crazy thing is now, this guy's coming off the pitch, shaking his head, mumbling, looking like he was fuming. When you look at it, at right back, we've got a centre back. And at left back, we've got a centre midfielder. That's what we've got at the moment. It, it's not working. It may work when we dominate games, but when you're not, doesn't look great. This is probably why Timber would have been playing. And maybe why Tommy Asu's got to go in at fullback, to be honest. Um, let's go to the two centre backs. Um, in fact, I'm going to give him two and a half. I give him the same as Ben White. Second goal's his fault. He goes to sleep. He's admiring the ball going over his head. Um, let's go with Gabriel. Not a good night at the office. When I was younger, there was a, a cartoon. It's Pinky, it's Pinky, and the brain, 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 brain. If you're old school, you'll remember that. What I realized last night, Saliba is Gabriel's brain. When he has to take responsibility and lead the centre-backs, doesn't look good. Doesn't look good, man. This guy was not good yesterday. He wasn't terrible. You, If you know the cartoon, you know the cartoon. You're right there with me right now. Honestly, man, there was some there was some madness going on yesterday with Gabriel, man. He was, he was diving for free kicks. It wasn't good, people. It wasn't. I give him... I give him a three and a half. It was a bad day at the office, people. It was bad. Pinky and the brain settings, man. It's like his brain had been removed yesterday. He couldn't think. I'm glad some of you know about these classic shows, by the way. We take you back here. Cartoon Network, Boomerang, we're right there. The Jetsons, Flintstones. Listen, we'll we talk. We'll talk at a later date. Maybe we'll have a cartoon stream. There were some cartoons on the pitch last night, that's for sure. Um, let's talk Jakob Kivior. Um, I'd say he was the best defender, but make no mistake about it, he still wasn't good. It, you know what I mean? Let, let's keep it a book. Was he good yesterday? Not really. He was um, he was getting bodied as well by Jared Bowen. So Kivior was the best of a bad bunch. I did write down five, but I'm... Was he even that good? I don't know. Four and a half. I'll give him four and a half. I think he was the best defender. I think he was the best defender, but still not particularly good. The Kiwi's still not ripe to me, people. I'm telling you. It's still sour. Um, we're having cartoon discussions in the chat now. I thought Kivior was the best of a bad bunch. There was nothing... There's nothing to celebrate in that performance. That's for sure. Um... Let's talk about the midfield. I mean, genuinely, last season and the the season before, I called Granite Xhaka and Mohamed El Neni the Chuckle Bro the Chuckle Brothers, Chuckle Chuckle Vision, Chuckle Chuckle Vision, another childhood classic show. People, honestly, last night the Chuckle Brothers was like a dream midfield for me to see in that midfield. I would have loved to have seen El Nenny and Granite Xhaka last night. And I used to mock that midfield. This was bagel settings, people. 112 million British pounds, people. You know how powerful the British pound is around the world? The exchange rate. 112 million British pounds. Neil from the in-betweeners, a Chelsea pensioner, and a guy that looks like he needs to get a gym pass for pure gym, 24 hours, swipe your card and do some bench press. That midfield has got money laundering, brown envelopes written all over it. Somebody should be losing their job for that midfield. I'm going to zoom in on it. Somebody should be losing their job for that midfield. One of the worst midfields I've ever seen in my life as an Arsenal fan. Possibly the worst. And I've seen bad ones. Danielson. The guy, the Brazilian with no skill, who went, went raving every Tuesday night in central London. We've had bad ones. Kim Kallstrom with a broken back. I've seen bad midfields. This was the worst. 
I don't even know which one to start. Let's start Jorginho. He's the one in the middle. Somebody said to me last night, Jorginho's got 53 pace on EAFC. It should be about 12. It should be about 12 pace. That signing, do you know how many arguments I had on Twitter when we signed that guy? I said, this is a shocker of a signing. Chelsea couldn't wait to get him off their books. 120 grand a week. They've had his best years. Do you know why we signed this guy? I'll tell you right now. Because back when this guy was leaving Napoli, Pep Guardiola wanted to sign him at Manchester City. Who was his assistant manager at the time? Mikel Arteta. Back then, Jorginho was actually a good midfielder. He you know, still could move a little bit. So because Pep wanted him five years ago, and we had an opportunity to sign him last year, well, Pep wanted him, so he must be good. I mean, this guy, Jorginho. Jorginho, you know, Brazilian name, played for Italy. The Brazilians obviously didn't want him. Shocking. He is a absolute shocking midfielder. El Nenny is better than him. And I think El Nenny is awful. This guy can't run. He can't tackle. He's weak. He don't shoot. Dreadful. If you was playing centre mid and Jorginho is up against you, you're going to have a field day. I give him three out of ten. It's a money laundering transfer. In fact, I'm giving him two out of ten. I, I, it's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It really is. My nan's 83 years of age. She's quicker than Jorginho, honestly. He, he is he's just... Honestly, and Golo Kante, it's a miracle that he did this guy's running and made him successful at Chelsea. The most One of the most washed-up transfers you've ever seen at Arsenal. And listen, people, don't be surprised if he gets a new deal. And Rastaman, you spot on. This guy had on the armband last night. He was captain. This guy stood on the Emirates pitch as a Chelsea player and said, once a blue, always a blue. And he's now wearing the captain's armband at Arsenal Football Club after mocking us when he beat us for Chelsea. And I'm supposed to back this guy on the pitch, running backwards with a caravan on his back. Do me a favour, mate. Get this guy out. He should be playing in the MLS in Saudi. Go and cash out. You're finished in a top European league. You're done, mate. Get him out. I'm fuming. Don't ever disrespect the Ford Escort. Again, comparing it to Georgia. I apologise to anyone with a Ford Escort. It's more reliable than him. It's quicker than him as well. Let's go to the next one. I don't know which one to go to. While we're talking about Chelsea, let's talk about the next one. I always say that the fan base is like the blood in someone's body. It keeps the whole body flowing, right? And when the fan base... I, I, I was told this in America by people who work for Arsenal. They said people from Arsenal will scroll through social media, will go through YouTube, will watch videos and will see, okay, what's the general feeling? If you remember a few years back, when Wenger left, they put out a story through David Ornstein that Mikel Arteta was going to be the next Arsenal manager. This is when Wenger left. They fed the story to the media, said, put it out there, see how they react. There was uproar. There was a backlash. We've waited 22 years for a new manager, and you want to get a manager that's never managed. We're not having it. Everyone was going crazy. And what happened? Guess what? They never gave the job to Mikel Arteta. They said, you know what, Stan? We've put it out there. The fan base are fuming. They don't want it. He said, all right, cool. We'll get an experienced manager, Unai Emery. Then Emery left and they said, okay, we're going for him now. So Arsenal fans need to start being honest. Don't dress everything up and pretend that you're happy with things that you're not. Be honest with ourselves, and we'll maybe move forward as a football club. What I mean by that is when you sign Kai Havertz and everyone's watched Kai Havertz at Chelsea and we all think the guy's rubbish. Talent, yeah. Production, nothing. Instead of saying, we don't want him, he's an ex-Chelsea player who's been rubbish, who costs 65 mil and we can get better. People go, oh, look what he was doing at Leverkusen. Arteta can rescue him 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Well, what do you, what are you seeing right now, people, from Kai Havertz? I'm personally seeing one of the worst signings I've ever seen in my life. That's what I'm seeing. William was better than this guy, and, and he was bad. But William was a free transfer. William, fair play to him, he walked away from his contract at the end of the season and said, get me out of here before the fans turn up. He knew it was bad. This guy last night, did you see when he went to control the ball and it bounced off him? I thought he was wearing Timberland boots. It went straight to the goalkeeper. I said, brother, is this, are we being serious here? This is the worst signing at the moment I've ever seen at Arsenal. When you bear in mind the price tag. And remember, we've signed Mustafi. And he was horrendous. This guy is a shout. Chelsea must be, they must be throwing parties about this one. They bought Havertz for 65 million. This is the equivalent of Chelsea paying 65 million for El Nenny. It's crazy. It's absolute. He is, uh, do you know what? I'm giving him, I'm giving him a zero. And some of you might go, zero, that's a bit hard. The whole thing's getting too much for me now. I can't, I can't, there's nothing. There's nothing I can say. I haven't seen him have one good game for Arsenal. I haven't. I can't remember the last time he had a shot on target. Probably the sympathy penalty we gave him at Bournemouth. I would genuinely, and I mean this seriously, right? And I don't say this often. I would get rid of him in January. And I wouldn't usually say get rid of a player within six months. Thomas said Havertz started well, bro. He's six foot three and he put his body in the way a couple times and tackled people. Are we really going to start praising players for putting a challenge in on someone? Like, we're scraping the barrel. We're scraping the barrel if we're going to start praising people for that. If you turn up to work on time tomorrow, your boss will not praise you because you're expected to turn up on time. That's basically what we're doing with Kai Havertz. Well done, Kai. You've turned up at 9am. Well done. But what did he do when he got there? He didn't do anything. Get rid of him in January. I'm being serious. Loan him to Leverkusen with an option to buy and put it down to experience. It's gone wrong. It's it's a horrendous deal. I wonder if Vinay and people like that are leaving. I wonder if it's got anything to do with this deal. Zero for Kai Havertz. One of the worst players I've ever seen. Shouldn't play for Arsenal. Bench him and then get rid of him the first chance you get. Let's talk about Fabio Vieira. I mean, wow. He is basically the light version of Kai Havertz. He's the smaller, slimmer version of him. He's horrendous. Second season. Give him a full preseason, they said. We'll see the real Fabio. I'm not calling him. Uh, from now on, by I have to take Vieira out of his name because that, to me, represents the greatest midfielder that we've had, probably. Uh, I, I refuse. He's, he's Fabio from now on. Listen, lightweight is one thing. If you're lightweight, you're lightweight. You can be lightweight and still be a baller. Meza Ozil was lightweight. But he was quality, you know. This guy is just, he's probably better than Havertz. At least he's had the odd shot and the odd something. 35 million for the new, apparently, Bernardo Silva. Which part? The only thing he's got in common with Bernardo, they're both born in the same country. They, they got nothing in common. Nothing. He's got to go as well. He's got to go. Get rid of him. Send him back to um, Porto. You can have him for 12 million. His wages aren't that big. They'll probably take him back. He is not going to make it at Arsenal. He's not. He's really not going to make it. I'm sorry. I, and I don't feel the same way about Fabio as I feel about Havertz. The Havertz deal kind of makes me feel a bit sick. Like, I'm, I'm disgusted with that deal. The Fabio one, I just kind of look at him and think, there is a bit of a player there, but I just don't think it's going to happen here. It's, it's Mendes. It's Mendes. Mendes probably rang Edu, said, listen, bro, I got this player, yeah. Little Portuguese creative player, 35 million. Get yourself 500 grand out of it. Yeah, go on, I'll take it. Um, it ain't happening for him. I, I didn't even know he was on the pitch. Didn't even know, in, in all seriousness. Um, I feel bad because I don't want to rate him lower than Jorginho because Jorginho is an absolute disgrace. I'll give him... I don't know why I actually gave Jorginho now. I'll give him a two and a half. 
he turned up, he put his kit on, he tied the laces on his boots. Beyond that, I can't praise him for anything. He's he's done for me. You get rid of him in January as well. Send him to see what Portuguese club still rates him. Uh, the front three. I'll start with a positive out of the front three. It's not that positive, by the way, but it's the worst of a bad bunch. Um, yeah, you're right. Fabio Vieira could do with some nourishment, man. Some vanilla, banana, nourishment. Some yam and banana and some dumpling. That brother's eating beans on toast, I'm telling you. That diet ain't working, bro. Um, Reese Nelson. Um, for me, was the best Arsenal player. And trust me, that's not saying a lot. It's not set. First off, Reese Nelson was our best player. He was our best player. He's the only player that, when he actually got the ball, started running at people. Everyone on the pitch for Arsenal, watch them the next game. They get the ball and they stand still. They turn into statues. It's mad. We don't run with the ball anymore. Um, Reese gets... I give him a four, I give him a four and a half. I give him a sympathy five. Is Reese ever gonna make it at Arsenal? I'm not sure. I give Reese some credit because he doesn't get a lot of first team football, and you've got experienced, expensive players on the pitch who did nothing, who didn't even show up. So I give him five. He put in a lot of effort first half, couple good runs, second half. It became difficult and he got dragged. I think South London's finest said it in the stream. He said, when we make a sub, he'll get dragged straight away because he won't take Havertz off. Havertz and Fabio got 90 minutes. Can somebody explain how they stayed on the pitch? Um, Leandro Trossard. I mean, a lot of people... Let's get one thing clear. Trossard is a very good football player, right? There's no doubt about that. So I don't want to overreact with what I say about Trossard now. There's no doubt he's a baller. But Trossard's doing himself no favours. Because Trossard keeps coming on, looking like a world beater. And then when he starts, he does nothing. Does nothing. You ain't getting in this Arsenal team on the left wing over Martinelli. You're just not. You're just not. He, you know, he, the intensity, he got bullied. Kufau and Kudus on that side, they rattled him. He got elbowed in the face. They outpaced him. They doubled up on him. He couldn't get away from them. To me, if you're going to play Trossard, play him attacking midfield where you've been trying to play Havertz. That's where I think you can get something out of him. A bit more central. Somebody made a good point yesterday. I think it might have been Lay was saying, you know, because he can use his left and right foot, play him in a more central area where he can go both sides. Putting him on the wing against fullbacks, especially when they've got pace. I mean, Kufau's not the quickest. But Trossard had a stinker. He was poor. Uh, he played one good pass to Zinchenko. I'd probably give him a three. He was poor. He was poor. It didn't work. The eight roll is for Zinni, not Trossard. Either one of them, as long as it's not Havertz. Abinav said, what is that midfield? Uh, bro, there ain't a midfield. It's invisible. We should have started ESR, in my opinion. Well, ESR's injured, bro. We will talk about that. But are you fit, bro? He's certainly not fit. And uh, let's finish the starting 11 with Edward. I mean, I spoke about him at the start of the stream. For those of you who've just tuned in, the stat I read out at the start of the stream, Eddie and Ketia has not scored in 18 away games in a row. 18 away games, people, without a goal. Not a tap-in, not a penalty, not one off your shin that rolls in, not nothing. Zero goals. 18 games in a row. If he doesn't score against Newcastle on Saturday, which he probably won't, he hasn't scored for half a season away from home. And I'm supposed to sing your defence is in trouble when this guy's in the room. I'm supposed to believe that this guy can help lead us to a title. I'm supposed to take this guy seriously as an elite centre forward. Come on, do me a favour. Uh, he might as well have not been on the pitch. It was a tough night at the office. The service wasn't there. I give him a one. He ran around. You could have put a greyhound dog up front and told them to run around, and he would have run around. He was That's how useful Eddie was. He had one chance, and he put it in the River Thames. It went that high over the bar. Useless performance. I said in the summer we needed a striker. We still need a striker. Will we buy a striker in January? Probably not. 
horrendous performance. He wouldn't have got in the West Ham team. I saw something the other day about um, about Eddie. I think Robbie was having a debate with with Lee, and he was saying about how Eddie and Ketia as a second choice striker is not bad. He went down the league and he started looking at teams and saying he's better than their second choice. He's better than this. The problem is, as I said before, Eddie now is our first choice because he's going to play more than Jesus because Jesus gets injured all the time. So if you look down the league, just quickly, right? Compare him to the first choice strikers, not the second choice. Tottenham top of the league, Son's playing up front. Son's a million times better. Man City are third, we're second. Man City are third. Haaland and Ketia, I mean, you know, he's not even better than... His hair would probably do more than Eddie would do. Alvarez, I mean, a million times better. So that's two. Then fourth place, Liverpool. I would say all three of Liverpool strikers are better than Eddie. Gakpo, Nunes, Jota, they're all better than Eddie and Ketia. So that's three. Aston Villa in fifth, Watkins is better. So that's another one. Newcastle are sixth, Isaac's better. I would even say Callum Wilson's better as well. Seventh is Brighton, Evan Ferguson is better. Eighth is Man United, Hoyland, I mean, he looks talented, I don't know, but maybe. West Ham in ninth, I mean, Antonio... He's not great, but he's a he's a problem. And Brentford's Ivan Tony. So there's your top ten. You'd be lucky if you get him in one team. So how is he good enough to play for Arsenal? Jared Bowen played up front yesterday. He's not even a striker. And look how well he played. So anyway, let's move on. Um no more stupid songs, no more green screens. He ain't getting no more green screens, that's for sure. Let's talk about the bench. This is going to be nice and quick. It's going to be nice and quick. There's not a lot to say. We made five changes yesterday in the second half. I'm not going to criticise any of these players. It's nothing. Every one of you got hung out to dry yesterday by your manager. Every one of these five substitutes got stitched up by your manager. I'm going to talk about the manager in the player ratings. You're 2-0 down, away from home, against West Ham. You need a goal. So you bring on Tommy Asu and Declan Rice, two defensive players. Declan Rice, I said it all week, Declan Rice has got to start against West Ham. Read the room. Read the room. Declan Rice played for West Ham for nine and a half years. That club means so much to him. He's joined Arsenal. He's having a great season. It's the first time he's gone back to West Ham. And you know, anybody that's played football at any level, when you play against your former club, it means that little bit more to you. Declan Rice, he's fully fit. He's playing well. You needed somebody in the midfield. You put him on the bench. You bring him on when you're 2-0 down. And West Ham fans are booing him. And they're laughing at him every time he gives the ball away. And this is supposed to be his return. And, and West Ham fans are singing to him, you should have signed for a big club. Crazy. You absolutely hung him out to dry. You stitched him up. If I was Declan Rice, I would have been fuming that he did that. 2-0 down, you're bringing me on. And then they concede a third and they're laughing at him. Then it gets to 3-0. Game over. You might as well end the stream. Martinelli, Odegaard, Saka, what did he say to them when they came on? Go and win me the game. Go and score four goals in 20 minutes. What's the point? You might as well have just said it's over. Leave them. Martinelli, Saka, Odegaard, relax. Odegaard, you scored a goal. Well done. I'm glad you scored, but I, I need you to score in bigger games, in more difficult situations. Scoring a consolation in the 95th minute, in the grand scheme of things, means nothing. So, no criticism for any of these five. Deckers, they stitched you up. Tommy Asu, what could he do? Martinelli, I hardly saw him touch the ball. Odegaard, no pressure FC. And Saka, I hardly saw him touch the ball. So, we can give all these a five. And it's not their fault. None of them. Arteta, mate. Let's talk about Mikel Arteta. Let's talk about Mikel Arteta. There is a cult within this football club and our fan base. 
it's like you've got to love Mikel Arteta. If you question him, some people don't understand why. And I don't understand why they don't understand. He's been here four years, spent 650 million. He's got one top four and one cup in that time. At Arsenal Football Club, or a massive football club. That is not a major achievement. I believe other managers could have done better than that with that much money. But the situation is... This picture, by the way, that we started the stream with is outrageous. I love that. Big up Richard Reed with that one. With the um, the waffle settings, man. Mickey Ross waffles. New and improved. No filler or fluff. Pure waffle. Trust the process tattooed on his forehead. <laughs> Mikel Arteta, listen. You got done, mate. This was Karate Kid and Mr. Miyagi. But it wasn't Pep Guardiola. It was Moisey. David Moyes, you know, the guy who he used to play for at Everton, done a masterclass on him with 28% possession. Moyes, you know. It got so bad, Paqueta started doing rainbow flicks over people's head like JJ Okocha 15 years ago. No respect, no manners, no nothing. Since he loves 43 formations, I'm giving him minus 43 people. This was a bad night at the office. You got done by Moisey, 3-0 with 28% possession. It don't get much worse than that, people. I'm going to keep it a book. You lost 3-1, three, three sorry, 3-1. We did score. You lost 3-1 to Moisey. And he didn't even have one third of the position. Minus 43 for 43 formations. And people say it's still too high. A shocker. And at 3-0, you bring three of your best players on. And risk them getting injured when the game's done. At 3-0, you just got to sit there and say, it's been a stinker. Just just get me out of here. You don't bring your best players on and risk them getting injured when the game's finished. I'll be honest. I'll be honest, people. He's got to try and win something for me. He's got to win something. And I'm at the point now, I'm being, I'm being totally honest. And this is only an opinion. It's not a fact. Do I think Arsenal win the Champions League this season? I would say no chance. There's always a chance, but I would say no chance. Because eventually, if we get through the group, which I think we will, you're going to have to play a Napoli, a Real Madrid, a Bayern Munich, a Manchester City. And I don't think this manager is good enough to turn those teams over here over two legs. I don't think he is. Um... Will we win the Premier League? I don't think so. I, I don't. I just don't think he has the competence to overcome Pep Guardiola over 38 games. City don't even have De Bruyne yet. And De Bruyne's their best player when he's fit and he's at it. They'll go up a level in January when he turns up. Are we going to spend big in January? Are we going to buy Ivan Tony? Are we going to buy Pedro Neto? Are we going to get a quality centre mid? Probably not. We'll sign some half-rated player... And the fan base will PR the living daylights out of them. I said last January, Costas. I kept tweeting it last season when we were losing games. That January window. And people was in the comments. Ah! They were going crazy. Ah! I couldn't believe it. I said, Ra, you man rate Jorginho like that. Trossard, good squad player, no problem. Kivior, it's an apprenticeship. It's not even a real job, but you might like he's not ready for the Premier League. He might have some talent, but he's not ready. It will be January. Yeah, Calvert Lewin probably. Let me get through these super chats because they're mounting up and I've got some facts. I've turned up with notes today, people. I got homework. Pen and paper settings. I've even scribbled things out and rewrote it and all sorts. It's all going off. Um Chris, thank you for the super sticker, bro. Trixie said, My new tattoo next month. What is the process? I mean, Smith Rowe, we're going to talk about him as well, man. But yeah, anybody that says trust the process, I always say, what is the process? What's the end goal? Is Arteta going to win the league or the Champions League? If he's not, move him on. Because we're Arsenal. That sh that sh that's what we should be aiming for. Um, Tapan said, Big C, disappointed. We have great players. We will never win never win anything under this fraud. Nothing will change until this fan base turn on top four. Happy super fans. Big up to you, bro. 
Beresford Production, appreciate it. Member for five months. Zinni's not a left back. He should be left back at the London Stadium. Zinni should play in midfield. I don't actually think Zinchenko is a bad footballer. I just think he's a bad left back. I watched him for Ukraine against England in midfield. He looked good. He scored. He played well. He's not. He's, he's a midfielder. Man City just put him there because Mendy was in all sorts of problems and they needed a left back. He's not a left back. Play him midfield or bench him. Um, Tunji said, thank you for that point. Our fans are a disgrace sometimes in our reactions to losses and different things happening at the club. Listen. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, but ultimately your aim as a fan should be, how can we get the best football club? It shouldn't be, oh, there's a guy there on Twitter saying that he doesn't rate the manager and you rate the manager, so you're angry about it. That's backwards mentality, bro. That ain't going to solve a problem. Arsenal haven't won the league for 20 years. If you're an Arsenal fan, we got bigger problems than you having a different opinion from another fan. If I go on Twitter and some guy says, oh, I think Arteta's an incredible manager, I don't go, oh, I'm fuming. This guy rates Arteta. I'm not bothered. Fair enough, you rate him. I don't think he's that good. But how do we get the best Arteta? Or is do we have to get someone else? Can we get a better striker? Can we get more centre mids? Find a solution. But the fans aren't on the same page. And this is why we ain't had no success for a long time. Not major success. Joel said, hey, Curtis, how worrying is it that last night our midfield cost 100 million? That's not including Jorginho. Could we look back and this could be the moment Mikel failed and not win the title? As a manager at a top club, you have to constantly progress. If your progress is halted or you go backwards, you've got to really question whether he's the right manager. Is he going to have a better season than last season? I'm not sure. If you said to me right now, will Arsenal finish second? I'm not totally convinced. I don't think we're going to win the league. I think Man City will win it. I'm not even sure we'll finish second. I don't know. Liverpool might be better than us this season. They've only got Europa League as well. They, they're running through that easily. I'm not sure. I, don't, I think we can only win the FA Cup. And I actually think the FA Cup's harder to win than the Carabao Cup. So I, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't win anything this season. Um, MJ said, uh, big up, big C, as this is therapy, it isn't healthy to mention United. Leave us alone. We got our own dunce manager to deal with. Yeah, you got some real problems. The roof's leaking. The manager's a mess. You know, you're, you're saving our manager from getting even more pressure. Big up, MJ. George Gunnar said, Havertz doesn't even look like a pro footballer. He's, I don't know what he looks like. Yeah, you know, he, he looks like he should be working in a drive through with one of them hats on his head or something saying, can I help you with your order? That That's probably where he should be at right now. Um, but he scored in a Champions League final for Chelsea. We'll be living off that for 10 years. Cole said, sell all the bad players to Colorado Rapids. Yeah, Kronke, do us a favour. Sign some of our rubbish. Young Gunner, Arteta's favouritism for poor players is beginning to concern me. Stinks of arrogance. Too much faith in players that can't do the basics. Somebody said in the chat yesterday, you shouldn't have favourites. Every manager in the world's got favourites. That's the reality in a work environment, in a football environment. My problem with Arteta is his favourites are not even the best players. I don't mind if Saka and Saliba and Odegaard and Martinelli are his, are his favourites. That's justified. But some of his favourites are Havertz and Jorginho and Fabio and, and Zinchenko and these guys here. That's the issue. Some of his favourites are rubbish. Um, Guna ER said Antonio Conte. I just think with Conte, he's, he's too reactive. This board would be scared of him. And he's ex-Tottenham. A lot of the fan base would have no patience with him. But we need a ruthless winner, man. Need a ruthless winner. Get me a Zinedine Zidane. Get me a Roberto Mancini. Get me get me a winner. Get me a proven winner. Southern Guna, big up yourself, bro, said minus 100 in order for the manager. Needs to resign immediately. We need to be looking for a real manager to get us over the line. More cups thrown into the bin than actual trash. Scandalous. Throw Havertz in the bin. Throw Jorginho in there. Don't throw the League Cup that we haven't won for 30 years. Ask Kevin Campbell what that day meant winning that League Cup at Wembley to him as a player. Ask any fan that went to that game if they remember that game or watching it on TV. As fans, we remember the good moments, winning trophies. But this manager, 
It's it's all PR. Oh, we nearly won the league and documentaries for players getting over injuries. The new documentary, Gabriel Jesus getting over injury, episode four of him in in the gym lifting his knee up and then three months later he gets injured again. I mean, make it make sense, people, please. We bring out documentaries and all or nothings, but we ain't lifting no trophies. People say last season was a season to remember. I don't remember Arsenal lifting a trophy last season. It ain't a season to remember for me. There were some good moments, but in five years' time, I'm not going to go, wow, that 22-23 season, man. What That brings back some good memories. No, what I remember is drawing with Southampton. I remember Haaland scoring and flicking his hair around like a L'Oreal advert because I'm worth it. It was wild. That's what I remember bottling the title. Rosh said this therapy is good. Thanks. Hey, listen, you know we don't play. It's not for the faint-hearted. Michael said Ten Hag gets top four in a trophy in his first season. People are turning on him now. That's all Arteta has achieved in four years. Where's the pressure on him? We don't like pressure. Our fan base say we are the Arsenal. The mighty, mighty Arsenal. The Invincibles, Wenger, Henri, Burkamp were a giant of a football club. But when you say, actually then, go and win something, people start to backtrack. They don't like that. They don't realise that quality players, quality managers are meant to get over the finish line and win something. You know, it does. it's like your dad ringing you and saying, how did you get on today? You say, I scored a belter, but it was offside. Well, it was offside then. It don't count. It's irrelevant. Oh, we were brilliant until March. Then it all went wrong. Okay, well, means nothing then really, does it? You finish second. Nobody cares. People will look back on last year and go, oh, that's the year Man City won the treble. They won't go, oh, that's the year they released a documentary on Gabriel Jesus getting over his injury. Nobody's going to say that. It's cr they ain't going to bring out, you know, documentaries about that season and celebrate it in years to come. Did you, oh, Arsenal, 22-23, how'd you get on? Oh, did you win anything? No, nothing. All right, delete it then, not interested. Let's save some memory on my laptop. Um, and you're right, like I said, Ten Hag... Got what Arteta got in one season. Now Man United fans saying get rid of him. Eddie Howe got a, a relegation threat in Newcastle into the top four. They slapped up PSG three weeks ago. I've never seen Arsenal slap up PSG. George said, only way we can salvage this season is buying big in January. Considering recent history, can't see this happening. Fan of the process so far, but if Arteta fails to win a trophy, he'll have to go. And look, George is a little bit more supportive of Arteta than me. That's fine. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. January will be pivotal to this season once again. If Arsenal treat it like a summer window and spend big money, we got a chance to rectify the season and do something. You go and get Ivan Tony. you get me a centre midfielder, potentially a right winger, maybe three players might be too much, get at least two of those three. Top quality, not Jorginho-esque signings, and you've got a chance. But does anybody expect Arsenal to do that? When's the last time Arsenal had a major January transfer window? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Big up, George. Assassin said, Curtis, hear me out, bro. I've got an inkling that something his fans don't know is happening deep in the Arsenal board and hierarchy. People at the club are aware and are leaving before the ship sails. Listen, it's interesting. The doctor left. Vinay's leaving. You know, Steve Round left. Earpod Albert was on his way out, but he stayed. Do they know something? Who knows? Yeah, Rinat Aubameyang was the last major signing. We signed him because Alexis Sanchez left. It was one for, for another. Penalty spot said, Tony Neto and a good centre mid and we have a chance. The problem you got with that, bro, Tony will cost you 70, 80 million. Neto will cost you 50. Good centre mid will cost you 30. Are Arsenal going to spend 100 50, 60, 70 million in January. I can't see it. I really can't. Uh, and Trixie says, get me Roberto Mancini, loser mentality. And uh, if you offered me Mancini today, I'd take him right now. I'd take him right now. And let's, let's put things into just context a little bit regarding the manager. I mean, Century said, if you're genuinely Arteta out, you're a reaction. Oh, come on. I mean, please, man. Listen. The guy's been in the door four years. Four years, bro. We sat there through eighth and then eighth again. And then fifth, giving up fourth to Tottenham. 
and then second when we probably should have won it. And people are saying it's reactionary. How long are we supposed to give this guy? 10 years before I can make a judgment call on it. Do you know what? Just for him. Oh, I've got some paperwork. Let's talk cup competition since this manager's allergic to them. Right. He's been here four years. We know he's not, he ain't winning a Champions League and he ain't winning a Premier League. So let's talk about the cup competitions. In the 1920 season, when he first took over, we won the FA Cup. Big him up, he got that FA Cup. Cool. We lost in the last 32 of the Europa League to Olympiacos at home after extra time. I'm sure you remember that game. Aubameyang scoring the bicycle, then missing the sit. Research, people. I'm coming with facts. No, no opinions. Straight facts, pen and paper. 2021 season, his first full season. Receipts are here, people. 2021. This is for the Arteta fanboys. You might want to leave the chat now. This You won't like this. 2021. First full season. FA Cup fourth round. Bear in mind we're FA Cup winners. The season before. Which Aubameyang and Martinez pretty much won that cup for him. We get knocked out 1-0 in the fourth round to Southampton. Yep, I say it louder for them at the back. Southampton knocked the FA Cup holders out 1-0. League Cup, we lost in the quarterfinals, 4-1 to Man City. Alex Renarsson was the goalkeeper that night. He let one straight through his hands. The worst goalkeeper I've ever seen after a certain Manuel Almunia who we don't like to talk about on this channel. And just to top off that season, like I say, Arteta fanboys leave. This is going to get worse. We lost the Europa League semi-final to Villarreal, 2-1, to a certain... Unai Emery, the manager we sacked and laughed at and took the mickey out of him because he couldn't speak English, who's now an actual top quality manager again and has won European trophies. That was his first full season. Embarrassing. Should have been sacked. I don't know how he survived. And then we go to 21-22. This was the season. And by the way, that season he finished eighth. How he survived that season, I'll never know. We went into lockdown. I'm convinced that's the only reason he survived. You lost to Emery in a semi-final. You lost to Man City with Ren Arson in goal. And you lost to Southampton as the FA Cup holders. And you finished eighth. And you survived. That is a miracle. I think lockdown saved him his job. 21-22 season. When we bottled top four to our biggest rivals, Tottenham. We lost to Forest in the FA Cup third round. Nottingham Forest at the time were in the championship. Lewis Graben scored and knocked us out 1-0. Third round. First game of the FA Cup for Premier League clubs. In the Carabao Cup, we lost 2-0 in the semi-final to Liverpool. Cup competition's over. We weren't in Europe that year. Oh, but it'll benefit us not being in Europe because we'll only have one game a week. We finished fifth and, and bottled top four to Tottenham. That was supposed to be a successful season. Should have been sacked again, in my opinion. 22-23, last season, the memorable season. The fanboys say, oh, it's epic season. The atmosphere inside the Emirates, it feels better than ever. Okay, fair enough. Did you win anything? Oh, no, you didn't. But you had a good day out, a few pints and a burger with your mates. Listen, it's a good day out at football, but did you win anything? No, you didn't. So what did he do? Carabao Cup, the competition that we don't care about. Apparently, it's beneath us. It's in the mud. It's dirt. We're far too, you know, high up. We're, we're too big for the League Cup. Why should we win League Cups? Champions Leagues and, and, and Premier Leagues, apparently, is what I'm being told. Um, we lost 3-1 at home to Brighton after making 10 changes. Hein was in goal. Hein's baked beans was in goal. We lost 3-1 to Brighton in the third round. Yeah, he's changed the culture, apparently. The only thing he's changed is we sing a B-Tech You'll Never Walk Alone North London Forever song before the game. Listen, has he improved us? Yes. Are we going to win the big titles under him? I don't think we are. FA Cup, we lost 1-0 to Man City, making six changes. Nathan Ake with the goal. And Europa League, we lost to Sporting Lisbon 5-3 on penalties after Aaron Ramsdale was lobbed from 45 yards out. Europa League last 16 people didn't even reach a quarterfinal since winning the FA Cup in 2020, which by the way, 
was not his team, but he did get us to the final and win it. So I give him his props. He has not even reached a final of any competition since he's been at the club. And yesterday we binned the League Cup like we're some sort of prolific trophy winning football club. We are nearly four years without a trophy. We haven't won the League Cup for 30 years. We haven't won the FA Cup for nearly four years. We haven't won the Prem for 20 years. And yet, I'm supposed to sit here and say, don't worry about the League Cup. I'm not interested in it. Because this is what the fan base is saying. The FA Cup's beneath, uh, the League Cup's beneath us. We're aiming for bigger and better things. If we win the Champions League, we'll have that conversation. If we win the Premier League, we'll have that conversation. But until then, what happened yesterday was completely unacceptable. And he should not be getting away with that. Because this club is built on success, heritage, winning trophies and competing. Mourinho said it all them years ago, specialist in failure. We started accepting failure at this football club. We, struck, we started dressing up defeats as some sort of mini victory. We wanted Wenger out of the club because we said top four is not enough for Arsenal Football Club. We need to win trophies. Top four is not a trophy. And now we're back in the same zone where we're dismissing trophies for the sake of top four. Big clubs are supposed to do both. Not one or the other. It shouldn't be you've got to fall out of the League Cup to challenge for a title. You've got a 25-man squad and you've spent £650 million. Compete for the title, win the League Cup, challenge for the Premier League, ch do all of it. But anyway, it is what it is. Make sure you hit the like button, people. Over 2,000 of you in the chat. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We turned up with receipts. Let's, it's been a long show, hour and 15 already. Let's get the waffle in. And I'm telling you, the first sign of waffle, I'm out of there. It's that time again. K -k 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 man music. People don't understand. Cone man music is going to the world and back, people. It, it, it started off as a bit of a joke, but it is the reality of the situation. The cone man got the manager's job. If it's a success, it's a miracle. But if it isn't, in reality, we knew it was always going to be difficult. I mean, he, he looks short of ideas there. He's probably looking at Havertz thinking, what have I done? Um, let's hear what he had to say. Any any sort of waffle, we are skipping through this, I'm telling you. And that's Effie said, imagine Wenger with 750 million. On his assessment of the game, he said, I'm very disappointed. Obviously, I'm responsible for that. We are out of the cup. We wanted to play a different game. We wanted to compete. We discussed for 48 hours in a very different way to what we've done. I mean, look. He takes the blame, but that's the bare minimum, bro. You signed that team. That's your team. That's your money you spent. Well, you spent Cronkay's money. Um, so it is what it is. Um, on if he brought on senior players at the end to send a message he said there are no messages to send whatever messages we send we send them with words we don't have to send them in a different way we've tried to put out a team we believe I'm skipping it he's saying experienced players you had Jorginho on the pitch bro you had experienced players on the pitch on how disappointing the performance was he said first of all there's disappointment with myself because I wanted the team to play in a different way we didn't manage to do that the pain is there we have to use this pain on Saturday pain is love I remember that was a Ja Rule album back in the day maybe he loves the pain Mikel on Aaron Ramsdale receiving pressure from the West Ham crowd, he said that is the situation. Obviously, the crowd can react in the way they do. Every player tries to do their best. On Smith Rowe's injury, he's got an injury in his knee. He's going to be out for weeks. Are you fit, bruv? You are not fit, bruv. Feel sorry for him, but not sure Smith Rowe's going to have a long time at this football club, man. Listen, you know I spent last week defending him on stream after stream. Not looking good for him, man. Knee injury, first start in the Premier League for 18 months, and the guy gets injured. Um, 
Moneeb said, Big C, can I ask yourself and the community a hard question? Is Arteta the guy to take us to the next level, i.e. win the Prem or UEFA, or is this guy our version of Brendan Rodgers? Well, that is the conversation. Is, is, if, is Arteta, do you believe Arteta can win the Champions League or the Premier League as Arsenal manager? If the answer is no, then my question is, do you not potentially look for a replacement sometime down the line if he's reached his ceiling? That's a question. It's a genuine question. On if the first West Ham goal should have been ruled out by VAR, he said, yeah, if there's VAR, there's no goal. I don't want to read it. We knew there was no VAR. On if we can use this defeat to motivate us, said what it shows you in football, what you did three days ago is irrelevant. I'm skipping it. And if we lack physicality without Saliba and Rice, he said, obviously, there are different players that bring something different. It's not about that. Some of them were competing. Some of them were competing, you know. Not all of them, some of them. That is shocking. On using players who haven't played minutes, you have to be fair on players. Something that is... Oh, I don't even want to read it. On the reception Declan Rice received, it's not for me to judge that. End the waffle. End the waffle. I'm going to finish off with one more thing. Let me just um, read these super chats. Trixie said, get me Roberto Mancini. Loser mentality ends now. I would love to see Mancini. Trixie also said, what these blind fanboys don't seem to understand is to fry fish. You need the right type and amount of oil. Fish and a competent chef to get cooking. We got bigger fish to fry, but we got the wrong, you know, the wrong oil. The temperature's wrong. You know, we're doing it all wrong. We've put the fish in the microwave in some water. It's wild. We don't know how to cook, you know. SG said, comb man music more like toilet man music. I'm telling you. It, it's, it's, it's filthy at the moment. Let's finish off with this. Imagine we got a dog and called him win. We should have called him hope because we ain't winning. We're just hoping for the best. That, that's, that's more of the PR. Right. I just wanted to finish by looking at this. Mikel. 29 signings since he's been at the football club. 29. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. I want to make sure you can see this. This is page two, by the way. So, obviously, there's going to be some worse ones than this. Mikel Arteta. Um, Matt Ryan on loan. Didn't really kick a ball for us. Cedric Suarez was first brought in on loan and then made permanent at the end of the season. Why did we make him permanent? Uh, oh, Win is a she, apparently. Still, we, we should have called her Hope. Um, and Willian, who is just an absolute... The worst free transfer you could ever imagine. So, page two has certainly not started in, in the way you want it to start. Let's go to page one. Let's go to page one. Let's scroll to the bottom. 29 signings. Austin Trusty signed as a favour to the owner. Never really kicked a ball for us. Pointless signing. He's gone to... Who does he play for? Sheffield United. He was awful the other day. He got bodied by Eddie and Ketty, so that tells you everything. Martin Odegaard. First good signing of the list. Still not totally convinced by him, and I still don't think he should be captain, but... He is a good player. You're right, G. He signed four, like three teams nearly. Odegaard's the first one you could call some sort of success, right? Alex Renarsson, the worst goalkeeper I've ever seen at Arsenal, apart from Manuel Al Moon. I don't even want to finish his name. It's like a swear word. David Rea, well, at the moment, we're waiting and seeing what happens with that. Marquinhos was a free transfer but we paid £3 million for him as a favour. As a favour to keep a close relationship with Sao Paulo. So we paid for something that was free. So that if they had good players in the future, maybe we'd get first refusal. Uh, Elliot said, Nyamin Waffles, sipping syrup, getting hammered by battered with the chit-chatter from that coma music. <laughs> Big up yourself. Um... So, Marquinhos, I mean, he ain't going to make it, Arsenal, is he? He's on loan in France. He's struggling. He, he's, this will be Wellington Silver Part 2. He'll have five loans and then we'll get rid of him. Um, so, we paid for something that was free. Make that make sense. Matt Turner, he came and he left. I called him Tina Turner for about half the time he was here. He's bang average. No disrespect. Bang average. Uh, Pablo Mari, rubbish. Left-footed Murtasaka. 
Signed because he was at Manchester City when he was there. Oh, Pep had him at City, so I'll have him. Rubbish player. Terrible. Um, another stinker of a signing. So far, we're at signing. We've done 10 signings here, and one of them have been good. Martin Odegaard. He initially came in on loan and then was made permanent at the end of the season, Pablo Mari. So it's actually 28 signings because what you know they've put they've listed him twice. Nuno Tavares, where my dog's at. Oh, oh, oh. DMX album settings, people. The dog started barking. Um, he kisses his dog, apparently, and he played like a dog. Terrible. On loan at Forest. Forrest aren't going to sign him on a permanent. He'll be back for preseason. Trust me. He will be back for preseason. They are not signing him. Um, Jorginho. Money laundering. I'm sorry. He's garbage. Absolutely horrendous. How do you go from trying to win a league? You're trying to sign Caicedo. No matter what you think about Caicedo at Chelsea, he would have been a great signing for Arsenal last January. It's a game changer in our midfield. You've got Xhaka playing well, Partey playing well, and you drop a Caicedo in there. You go from Caicedo to Jorginho, and I'm supposed to accept that, am I? I'm supposed to accept that. Come on, that sign-in was horrendous. I can't wait for him to leave. Every time he wears the armband, I feel sick, genuinely sick. I'm at 15. Albert Sambi Lukonga. We've gone from 28 to 15. There's been one good signing. Martin Odegaard. They've all been a miss. Straight jeans and fitted. Big tune that was, by the way. Uh, Albert Sambi Lukonga. Bambi Lukonga. Bambi on ice. He'll be back at um, Arsenal pre-season. He's on loan at Luton and he's injured. And they might get relegated. So they're not going to be buying him. So the next Yaya Torre, as Vincent Company called him, the next Yaya Sonogo, he's shocking and he'll be back pre-season. We're going to struggle to get rid of him because he's rubbish. Um, Takehiro Tomiyasu, number 14. I'll give him some credit. Solid player. First season was brilliant. Last season injury prone. This season seems to be finding his form. That was a good one. So we're at 2 out of 28 at the moment. Uh, Leandro Trossard, I'd say he's a good player. Hasn't proved himself as a starter at the moment. Um... But he's good. Yeah, he's good. 28 million, he's a good player. So we're at three. We're at 13. Well, we've got 12 left. Kivior, the Kiwi ain't right, people. The Kiwi is not right. It is sour. You lose Gabriel or Saliba, you can't rely on this guy for 15, 20 games. I think there is some potential there, but nah. Nah, 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 nah. Uh, it ain't happening, I'm afraid. He, at the moment, he's not ready. He should be playing for a mid-table team in the Prem. Gabriel Magalhães, I would say that's been a good signing, so I'll give him four uh, out of the list so far. Uh, Ramsdale, I mean, it has been good, but it's crumbled now. It's like the apple crumble you have, you know, after dinner on a Sunday, you know, it's crumbling everywhere. Um, so I'd say it's been a good signing for 30 million, but it's going down the pan now. Uh, Zinchenko, I mean, the defending, I think, is getting exposed. I think something's going wrong with Zinchenko. That reaction last night to being substituted was not positive. You know, I've never really seen him act like that. He was sort of you know, cussing under his breath, swinging his arms, probably saying, yo, I came here from City, man, and you're dragging me off. What's going on? Like, should be playing centre mid. Not happy. So Zinni is, I mean, he was good at, for most of last season, but he's getting exposed this season, if I'm being real. Fabio Vieira, not happening, my friend. Not happening. Get rid of him in January. If he left in January, you got to say that's been a flop. 35 million. Most of us had never heard of him. And he's not good. He, he's, he's had a couple of good games. Brentford away, Everton away. But if you're talking about two games over 18 months, then he's been a flop. Um, so, yeah, not good enough. Odegaard then was signed on a permanent. So it's actually 27 players. Apologies. Timber, good signing, but injured. So at the moment, we haven't benefited from that. Thomas Partey, 
I won't go as far as to say that he's been a flop because when he's been fit and playing, it's the general. He's a beast of a player. But I would say it's been underwhelming, man. He needed to play. He should have played another 25 games for us that he hasn't played. So I would say underwhelming, man. He's a fantastic player, but he's not on the pitch enough. So I won't say he's been a flop. But the guy's not available enough. I mean, Juk said he's been good, but he hasn't played enough, bro. He misses too much games. You can't say he's a major success when you're missing a quarter of your games each season. It's way too many. It's way, way too many to, to call him a success, but not a flop. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, at this point, again, injured too much. Injured for three months last season, injured at the start of this season, and injured now. Can you really say Gabriel Jesus is a major success? 11 goals last season. He's not really doing more than what Lacazette was doing. 10 goals, 12 goals. Good player, but not, not fit enough, doesn't score enough. So we're, at, we're currently at four out of 27. Ben White, Ben White, to be fair, at centre-back the first season, I wasn't convinced. Last season, he did really well at right-back. I might be in a minority here, and I might be a little bit harsh. I'm still not fully convinced about Ben White at right-back. I'm going to be honest. That might be really harsh. I might be being really harsh on him there. But I, I, I think I would like another right-back to compete with him, a natural right-back that gets forward and overlaps Saka a little bit. But he hasn't been bad. It, it, I, I definitely can't call him a flop um, because he was very good last season. So he, he's done well. He's done well. But I still think you can get a better right-back than him. It, it would be what I would say about him. Kai Havertz, I mean, say no more. I've said enough. Elliot said Ben White is one of the best in the league. I mean, you said one of the best. One of the best what, though, would be my question. He plays right back for Arsenal. And I would say... Rhys James... Kyle Walker... Trent... All those guys are better than him at right back. That's why he don't get in the England squad. And when he's in the England squad, he don't kick a ball anyway. He don't kick a ball. So even when he's there, he don't play. Timber would have been better than him, I think. Uh, listen, Ben White, I'm going to say he's been a success, but I still think you can get a better right back than him personally. Trippier was a better than him last year as well. But a lot of them guys I've mentioned, that they, they, they're not fit enough. You know, Reese James is always injured. Carl Walker's the best right back. Um, Havertz, I mean, it's Halloween. It's a disaster. It's Freddy Krueger. It's a nightmare. And Declan Rice has been a hit. So we're giving him six out of 27. Odegaard, Gabriel, Ben White, Declan Rice, and what was the other one? Part A, I think. And Zinchenko, uh, Zinny, Zinny's Zinni's up, up for debate. We're giving him maybe six out of 27. Six signings, you could potentially give him eight, depending on what you think about Zinchenko. I mean, Jerry says nine out of 27, I've counted, if you're generous. So you're talking about one in three, and that's you being a bit generous there. One in three, there wasn't one on page two, right? That was Matt Ryan, Cedric, and somebody else, right? So trusty, no. Odegaard, that was the first one. Um, Tommy Asu, that's two. Trossard, I'll give him that three. Gabriel, four. I mean, Ramsdale's done okay. I'll give him five, but he's he's crumbling. Zinni, I think, is getting exposed. I'm not giving it him. I'm sorry. He's poor this season. Uh, Timber's injured. If you're injured, you're no good. Part A, I'll give him part A at six, but he should have played more. Jesus, no. 11 goals and injury prone is not enough. I'll give him Ben White 7, and I'll give him Declan Rice at 8. 8 out of 27 have been successful signings. And and people tell me this guy's talent ID is elite. I'm sorry, it's not. It's not. He's getting one in three signings right. So, every, so two out of every three he's getting wrong. But you're not allowed to criticise the manager, apparently. I'm trying to come with facts here, people. 
Not fiction, not opinions, factual evidence, paperwork, receipts. Let's go through the super chat. SG, Cone Man music. Oh, I read that one more like toilet music. Uh, Raymond said, man's been single five years, just turned down a seven out of ten. <laughs> oh, up to Raymond. Big up, Raymond. Uh, evolve or fail, says White. Yeah, he's got to evolve. He's got to turn into that Charizard Pokemon, I'm telling you. Uh, Trixie said, maybe people leaving because the gig is up. We need a poll for what manager would be best to take us forward. Ain't it interesting? They say our away fans are the best. Half of them walked out last night early. They'd seen enough. I don't actually blame them, but, you know. Um, Southern Guna, follow the money. It's been spent, just not wisely. Uh, time to seriously look at cleaning the house. We have wasted so much loot on rubbish. You're spot on, bro. We got half a dozen players that need selling right now. Sell Havertz, sell Fabio, sell El Nenny, sell Cedric, sell Jorginho. That's at least five. Zinni, I think you've got to move him and maybe sign a proper left back. ESR, as much as I've defended him, I think his future's up in the air with this injury. I'd sell Eddie and Ketia as well. There, there's a lot. Part A in the summer can go. Ramsdale's going to leave. He ain't going to be second choice. He'll go. There's probably eight players you've got to get rid of. Alexander said, for me, I'm reserving judgment until the Prem and Champions League becomes unwinnable. Last season earned that, but we are starving for major silverware. Listen, as we end this, I want to finish with talk of solutions. Um, it's, not, it's not always about the problem. We have to say, can it be fixed? We need, first of all, to get injured players back fit, but we, we, we can't seem to do it. Man are saying sell, win the dog. It is sad. <laughs> Listen, take win on loan with an option to buy, man, and change change her name to Hope. We haven't been winning, so call her name Hope. Um, it, it's crazy, isn't it? We, you know, we sell players like Balogun, um, as Trixie's saying, and... Don't give them a chance. But we got to watch Eddie for five years and Fabio for three years or two years and, and stuff like that. But we need a solution. We've got to bounce back this weekend against Newcastle. Um, that game is a tough game. They've just slapped up United. They've rested a lot of players and we've lost. Confidence will be lower. We did win there last season. So we need to bounce back. We've got Burnley and Sevilla next week. And then the international break. You need to try and get part A and Jesus fit, which is easier said than done. ESR's out, Timber's out. Arsenal need a big January transfer window. I said the same thing last year and it didn't happen. And people online were dressing up that window as a success when it wasn't. Arsenal need a serious window. Quality, not quantity. Ivan Tony wants to sign for Arsenal. They will sell him at the right price. If we don't put the money on the table, he will probably end up at Chelsea because Chelsea need a striker and Chelsea aren't going to sit there and go, oh, let's wait until the summer. They'll get the bag out in January. They need a striker. They've got Nicholas Jackson up front. Tony wants Arsenal. Get Ivan Tony. Don't make excuses. You spent £65 million on Havertz, who's done nothing. So if you've got to pay 70 or 75 for Tony, pay the money and get it done. We need him. Or if you think there's a better striker, go and get somebody else, wherever, whoever that is, right? Whatever striker you recognise, get him in. We need a centre midfielder. We've got no El Nenny and Partey in January. Get a, I want a Barella, but even if it's a Douglas Louise, I'll take it. It's better than what we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, Bruno Gimares. How did we not get him? We've got Edu as sporting director. He worked with the Brazilian national team. Where are the Brazilians? I thought we were going to sign top quality Brazilian internationals and you've signed Marquinhos. No disrespect, but Bruno Guimaraes was right there. You never signed him. We, we're supposed to be getting top quality Brazilians through the door. We need a big January. We need to win on Saturday. Things can change quickly in football. As I said, when we signed Declan Rice, he was seen as the replacement for Granite Xhaka. But because Thomas Partey is always injured, Rice has come in to replace Partey and now the Granite Xhaka role has not been replaced. You're trying to put Havertz there 
and he can't fill that role. So that's the problem. We need a centre midfielder. Our midfield is not good enough. We don't have enough depth. If Declan Rice was to get injured now, we are down to the bare bones. So we've got to bounce back. I know we've had Arsenal therapy an hour and 36 minutes. And it's been a long one. We had to talk about our problems. I had to come up with some facts for people who say, you know, oh, it's just an opinion. We pulled out facts and paperwork, people, to, to, to back up the points that we've got. Things can change quickly in football. You go to Newcastle and win. There's a feel-good factor. Champions League against Sevilla. Beat them. And then Burnley at home, we should beat them. But Newcastle away is a tough, tough game. And you're right, Gensi. He passed on Bruno Gimaresh. Paqueta, Diaby, players that went to clubs that we could have got and they would have all benefited us. So, listen, people, I am out of here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, later than usual, I will be back tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, with press conference reaction. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, read more of his waffle as uh, he does the press conference for the Newcastle game. We'll look ahead to that. It's a very difficult game, that Newcastle, high on confidence. Managed to rotate some players against United. And, um, and yeah, it, listen, it will be a big watch along on Saturday. I will be back on Bleacher Report on Saturday as well after full time. Um, so look out for that. I'll give you all the details in the watch along. Let me round up with these uh, super chats. Highly wanted said, I really wanted us to win. Why are we making it harder for ourselves? It seems at times Arteta likes to complicate things, uh, makes life more difficult. He wants to rescue players. He wants to do, you know, 43 formations and all of that inverted stuff. Sometimes you need your own style. You can't copy Pep on everything. Uh, John Layout said, Big C, if this whole thing fails, I'll be really annoyed because we're being sold a lie. Honestly, I want to make one thing clear before I get out of here, right? And there's 2,000 of you in the chat. I'm not convinced by Mikel Arteta, and I probably never have been since he's been at the club. To be honest, I've always had question marks over his man management and tactics. But I want him to be a success at this football club. Because if he does well, we do well, we all benefit and reap the rewards of that. I'll be shameless beyond belief if Arsenal ever won the title or the Champions League. And it's difficult to have to start again and get a new manager and get new players in and change the way you train. But I also don't want to keep heading down a road without knowing what's at the end of that road. And at the moment, it feels like Arteta may have reached his ceiling, which was finishing second. So I want him to do well, whether I like him or not. But he's got to do better. He's got to do much better. Saturday's going to be a big test for him. SG said Havertz looks like uh, Stinky from Hey Arnold. And SG said Krychenko is a B-Tech Gus from Reese's. Uh, recess, sorry. And uh, Iro said, man like C, I finished work at three looking for that therapy. That game, bro, it's like playing an ultimate team with a couple of top players. I swear, it's crazy, isn't it, bro? Listen, big up to everyone for tuning in. Thank you very much for your patience. And I'll see you all 2 p.m. tomorrow, people. Bless. Ooh.